Okay, hi, welcome back. Let's talk about some books some more. Okay, so this month was a little different, all right? Um, I didn't get to read as much as I did last month. I only read um, three books. Um, these books were a little bit heavier, required a little bit more concentration. Um, well, two of them did. Uh, the horror book I read really didn't require that much concentration. It was still good, but it was, you know, still what I would consider a light read. So, yeah, we only got three this month because it was really busy. It's tax time. Everybody's getting their eyes checked. So just a lot of patience in and not much time for me to read in between patients, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully I'll be able to keep this video shorter than the last one. Kind of doubt it, but we'll see. So let's start with what I would consider the light read. The light read was the horror book. Um, I mentioned it last uh last video it's my other Paul Tremblay book um, a head full of ghosts this one um, was the one that I've heard the most about as far as his books are concerned um, he's written quite a few others but I think this one is probably one of the more well-known even though I think that a cabin at the end of the world is going to be getting a movie soon which will be cool you know I've seen that movie before, um, I'll watch it again. So what this one deals with, um, this one deals with a family that their oldest daughter becomes possessed and they allow a uh, paranormal show to come in and record them. Um, basically they did it because the father's out of work, the only one working is the mother and they needed the money they needed the money to be able to one live you know just live a normal life and they also wanted the extra help with their daughter from uh from these people you know because they needed to get a uh, exorcism and everything now this is this book does one of the same things that the other book last month read does where you don't really know what's going on. Is she really possessed? Could she have like some sort of, you know, mental health issue? Um, he doesn't really let you figure that out. You kind of think that she might be possessed, but you're not sure. And that's one of the things that Paul Tremblay does really well is you just really don't know what's going on. And that really leads to the horror of the book, the trauma of everything that's going on because you're kind of experiencing that with it. And the cool thing about this book is while it's told in flashbacks, it's told in flashbacks from the perspective of the youngest daughter. And now she's eight, okay? So you get that aspect of the story. I mean, you're not being told from the... Um, father who you know hasn't worked in a year and just recently found religion you're not told from the uh, perspective of the mother who's the only one working in the house and she's just you know beat down and she definitely is not concerned about religion at all she just wants you know her eldest daughter to be healthy again and um, and the only, so she's just like yeah okay bring them in let's see what they can do and you're not told from the perspective of the paranormal um, group that's in you're told from the perspective of a child and it's really really interesting now it's also disturbing there's some parts in here that made me go oh my god ew but again horror I mean I love horror and I like those kind of visceral reactions from books um, would I recommend this book? Hell yeah. Um, it's, it's really good. I liked it better than The Cabin at the End of the Woods. Um, cool thing in the back, it has like a, like book club notes and questions. And there's, you know, a, watch these scary movies and read these scary book things, which, you know, kind of added to my uh, wish list. But, you know, this is me working through my to be red pile. So trying not to add more to it unless it's manga but you know hey so there's that would I recommend this book um, 
yeah, heck yeah, read a head full of ghosts if you like horror. Um, I basically felt like I was watching, you know, one of my paranormal shows. So it was really interesting, really good. Um, definitely my favorite out of the two books that I've read by him. Pick it up. Okay. So, this one is The Summer Country by James A. Hatley, okay? Now, this one I got off of Thrift Books, read the little synopsis, it seemed interesting, had a blurb from my all-time favorite uh, author on it, Charles DeLint, um, who also writes uh, Urban Fantasy, and that's basically what this is. This is Urban Fantasy. Um, Did I like it? I really couldn't tell you. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of... I'm hesitant to use the word trigger. Um, there's a lot of subjects that could be problematic for people in this book, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is the main character, Maureen, um, has a sister. Um, but Maureen is in our time and she's been sexually assaulted and she now has PTSD and an extreme distrust of men she doesn't like men touching her she doesn't want men to be anywhere around her um, but she kind of has a thing for her sister's boyfriend she had thought the sister's boyfriend was interested in her at one time, but turns out, no, he just was really interested in the sister. And because of the sexual assault and the PTSD that she suffers, her relationships with her sister and her sister's boyfriend and pretty much everybody around her is really strained. Um, they pretty much think she's violent, she's crazy. Um, she goes out in the woods and she talks to trees, um, but I'm like, she studied to be a forest ranger. I mean, I would think that would be something that she'd, you know, do. But you feel bad for her, but then you can understand why people are so leery of her. Because she is violent and she is um, crazy. But when um, she gets attacked again by this guy because he can smell the, basically what they're calling the summer country in her blood. They can smell her, her like fey, Celtic otherworldness. He wants her because when you discover you have this blood in you, it, um, they want to, for lack of a better word, breed with you because the summer country is dying and they need to, I guess, repopulate it or whatever not all men can produce children and not all women can produce children so then of course this knight shows up to protect her and there's this whole weird dynamic with um, the knight you know she doesn't really trust him but she can't not trust him then the then like other evil characters start coming in and I can see what James was trying to do, you know, he was doing like, this woman's been hurt, this woman's been assaulted and abused, so I'm going to put her in these situations where she can get her agency back, but the only way I guess she could get her agency back was from more abuse, and I guess her overcoming said abuse by killing the bad guys that were hurting her kind of thing. I mean, I don't think that's spoilers. Um, that You could probably link that up to trigger warnings and stuff like that. But it's like... It's... The descriptions of the world and the magic and the reasons are well done, but it just... It, it got tiring after a while that the only way these, basically, women could find their strength was, was through violence and and sex, you know? So, I guess there's that. Would I recommend it? Kinda. I mean, if you can look past that and look towards the story elements, they're all in there. I love urban fantasy. Was it well written? Yes. 
would I read any more in this series? Probably not, if it is a series. Would I read more of this author? Cautiously, yes. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, my favorite author, Charles DeLint, also does strong women that overcome abuse, kind of. But it's usually not through more abuse. Sometimes, you know? So there's that. I mean, it's an older book. So, you know, going back and reading some older books, you're like, ah, maybe that wasn't the best story that I remember. But up to you. I mean, you can look it up and see if it's something that you want to read. I didn't hate it because I finished it, but I don't know. I probably wouldn't read any more in, in, in a series if it turned out to be a series. All right, so now let's talk about this last book. Oh, I love this last book. This last book was the best thing I've read all month. Um, I definitely want to read more of her. I need to get more of her. She's fantastic and fabulous. Um, it was The Bone Garden by Tess Gerritsen. This book is fantastic. Recommend, recommend, recommend. Read it. Love it. Everything about it. Everyone in here I adored. It was just fantastic. Um, first of all, this is the author. She's a surgeon and um, author now. Um, this book takes place in the 1800s. Okay, again, we're going to that Sherlockian time. I can't help it. I love it. And it does deal with a serial killer. Now, what happens is uh, it's told in flashbacks also. So you have what's happening in our time, which allows us to realize what's going on in um, the 1800s. So basically what happens is there is a, uh, the, the woman um, in our time, she's recently divorced, just bought herself a house. She goes out and starts to plant a garden. And then she accidentally, while she's trying to dig up her garden, she finds a set of bones. So she calls the police. The police come out, discover that they're really old bones, really old bones. So um, through that, she does research and comes in contact with the people that owned the house before her. It goes all the way back. And so they do more research through letters and documentation and things like that and discover that the house was involved with people that were involved in a serial killer investigation in the 1800s. And it takes place around a medical college, um, a hospital, and it's just so good, y'all. It's just so good. I, I want to say so much about it, but I don't want to give anything away. So it's like, ah, oh, just read it so I can talk to you about it, okay? <laughs> Um, it's been a long time since I've cried about a book, and I cried about this one. Really, I did. This book is heartbreaking, and it kept me on the edge of my seat. The characters are amazing. I loved everybody in here. Um, it's just so good. And the thing about this woman being a surgeon is when she writes about the medical procedures that take place back in the 1800s, it just makes you sick. It does. I mean, I like winced and like had to put the book down several times just because of what she was describing is what these people actually went through. Um, it's such a bittersweet story. Really, it is. It's so good. Please read it. <laughs> Please read it or read more of her because I have to read more of her because she's just really that good. So, yeah, I mean, really, is like, the more I read it, the more I was just wondering what was going to happen, and then you realize how everything's connected, and she does that so well, how she brings everything together at the end, and it's just, it, it definitely left me breathless, basically. So, yeah. Those are the three books I read this month. Um, Head Full of Ghosts, The Summer Country, and The Bone Garden. 
so well hopefully I'll have uh, more books for you next month we'll see what I'm reading but uh, tax time definitely so we're real busy at work going through a lot of patients a lot of double doctor days so we'll see what's going on okay so if you like tell me what you're reading maybe I'll add it to my to be red pile once I get done with all of this in here okay talk to you later guys bye